Table analysis is an important electrochemical technique used to understand reaction kinetics. By studying the table slopes, it reveals the rate determining steps in electrodes reactions, which is beneficial in corrosion research. By examining the table slopes, researchers can determine the polarization resistance, the corrosion rate, corrosion current and corrosion potential. These values give you the insight on how materials interact with their surroundings. First, I'm going to show you what's inside the corrosion cell box. Well, first we have the corrosion cell. This is device here, it's one liter corrosion cell. Then we have a single junction reference electrode. This one here. Then we have two stainless steel counter electrodes. And these stainless steel counter electrodes can also be uh, exchanged with classic carbon, like this one. The stainless steel rods are replaceable with classic carbon rods, while the same electrode shafts can be used. And these are the electrode shafts. And you have two of them. Then we have a, a thermometer that goes from 0 to 150 degrees centigrade. A polypropylene sample holder, this one here. A mount for the sample holder, this one here. A ligand capillary, just this thing, the glass part here. A ball joint, this this one part, to fix the ligand capillary to the surface of the working electrode. And a stainless steel clamp to hold the ligand capillary in position. We have a gas inlet and outlet, a cable to connect the two counter electrodes together, some open tops, and a water bath connection if you want to heat up the electrolyte with a water bath. Now we're going to construct the corrosion cell. It's a one liter corrosion cell, as I said, and it's an ASTM standard uh, corrosion cell for G5, G59 and G61 standards. The reference electrode, this one here, is filled with three molar KCL solution and make sure that the electrode contains enough uh, electrolyte, three molar KCL, before the measurements start. This one is connected to the blue banana, uh, banana plug of the Vionic and the electrode should be placed inside of the ligand capillary. The ligand capillary, this one is fitted with a spherical ball joint, so you can just insert it like this. And this you can put into position in the corrosion cell. Like this. Then we have the counter electrodes. Counter electrodes goes in here. So we have the stainless steel on one side and the stainless steel on the other side. Like this. And those two are connected with a small cable to increase the surface area of the counter electrode. And the surface area of the counter electrode is important for a proper current distribution. Standard, it comes with stainless steel 316 electrodes. The working electrode, this is a little bit in detail, so we fo focus more in detail about the working electrode. So here we have the sample holder. First we put a rubber ring inside the sample holder. These are some pogo pins, which you can see, which you can press. And this makes contact with the sample, and the sample is a metal disc. This is just an example. You can put any type of uh, metal or alloy in it. First you put an O-ring in the holder. So here you press an O-ring in the cap. And then you put the sample in the cap of the sample hole. Then you screw the cap on the sample holder like this. Just finger tight, don't use any wrenches or any other tools. And then you have the sample prepared. This is your sample 
which you're going to use. All right, this you connect to the top cover and you can tighten the shaft with this ring. Okay, go back to the corrosion cell again. So here's my corrosion cell. I can insert, it's a polypropylene um, sample holder and it can fit uh, samples between 14.7 and 60 millimeter in thick in diameter and a thickness between 0.5 and 2 millimeter. The exposed surface area is going to be one square centimeter. Uh, this is a lightweight, low friction and wear resistant material with good physical and processing properties and capable of operating in temperatures more than 90 degrees centigrade. Um, it's used for flat samples, metal samples, and uh, you can mount it with a rubber ring, as I showed you before. The sample holder is placed into the corrosion cell, and the distance between the working out road and your lugging capillary can be adjusted by entering or lowering the sample holder and the position of the lugging capillary. You can fix the capillary with this clamp and now the reference electrode is as close as possible to the working electrode. So you have a very low ohmic drop in between the reference electrode and the working electrode. Then we have a gas inlet and this gas inlet is there for uh, to put uh, nitrogen for example through the solution or you can cover the solution with a blanket of nitrogen if needed. And this you can put inside here. So you can attach a gas bottle to this gas inlet. Then we have our thermometer. It's positioned here. And the reference electrode goes into the looking capillary. Like this. And we have a stopper to seal it off. The electrolyte is going to be seawater, which is a sodium chloride uh, solution. And we're going to fill the cell with this seawater. Fill the corrosion cell with a one liter uh, seawater. So we have the corrosion cell, put a funnel inside the corrosion cell and just pour roughly one liter electrolyte in the cell. Be sure you keep a little bit left over for the lugging capillary. So this is mainly it. And then the next thing you fill the lugging capillary as well. Be sure that the lugging capillary is below the surface of the water level. So you be sure that the working electrode is low enough, but also the lugging capillary is underneath the water level, like this. Yeah. And then you fill the lugging capillary as well, just a little bit, like this, because After we put the reference electrode in, and the rest we can go in the corrosion cell. Okay. Now the corrosion cell is filled. Put the reference electrode in the lugging capillary, like that. And now we connect the banana plex to first the counter electrode. This one here, the reference electrode. I'll move a little bit closer to the cell cables towards the cell. Reference electrode and the counter of the working electrode is in the middle, like this. So you have your counter electrode, reference electrode, and the working electrode. Then we check on the Vionic 
the OCP, open circle potential. And it is, what is it? 57 millivolts. Now we go to the software and in the software we have opened it and there's a selection of, of the software. You can go to the procedure and there's a standard procedure, default procedure, linear polarization table analysis. Select that one. First, we're going to adjust the scan rate. It's now set to 2 millivolts a second, and we are going to adjust it to 10 millivolts a second. This is just for speeding up the process. Normally, you scan at a very low rate, but this is, for example, in this video, we're going to speed up the process a little bit. And we're just going to scan from minus 0.2 volts versus OCP to plus 0.2 volts versus OCP. And after this adjustment is done, we can increase the plots, polarization curve and table plot. Everything is set. We have our instrument selected. Procedure is ready to start. So first we press start. The OCP is measured. So we're measuring the OCP with respect to time. And normally you do this for a very long time, but uh, for this video, we're going to decrease that time a little bit and uh, just accept the values which we have. So we accept the OCP value. Be sure that the lugging capillary is close and the reference electrode is connected like this. And we can accept the OCP value. The measurement starts. And then we will see a polarization curve. You already see a table plot appearing. And from the table plot, we can do the table and analysis. In order to perform the corrosion rate analysis, the linear regression of the anodic and the cathodic side of the table plot must be specified. This is accomplished with the help of four markers, two per anodic side and two on the cathodic side. And such markers define the lines for the linear regression according to the table equations. So the measurement is almost finished. So the me measurement is finished. I can double click on the table plot and on the table plot, you can find perform analysis. There's the corrosion rate analysis, Tavon analysis, and we can set the markers on each part of the branches. And you can move, you can increase it if needed. And you can also move to complete setting with these two markers. You will find a detailed video on our Metro Altab YouTube channel that will take you through the procedure step by step. Thank you for your attention.